Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and today's topic is a little bit different and in today's topic we're going to talk about hard drives and why are they are designed uh, that they are meant to be failing depending on what kind of great hard drive you buy. It's not by defect, it's by, uh, I will say by design. I made a video showing before how, why they are failing it, the reason and in this video I'm going to go over telling you how to prevent them or how you can repair them. For example, I'm just gonna say, let's say you trying to transfer a big file from your SSD hard drive to a mechanical hard drive, or for whatever reason, or if you even have this one and randomly it just shuts down and comes back on or disconnects, people tell you, oh, change the SATA adapter, that's not the case. And if you get in sudden shutdowns, you can download a program, I'll leave the link in the video description, it's a free program. And you can check the state of the hard drive, how many bad sectors you have, and what are the errors that you're getting. If your error is about a file transfer or communication between the hard drives, failed communication, that's because it's meant by design. They designed it this way so it won't last you forever, so you can actually buy new ones. Unless you buy a premium grade hard drives, then they don't try to do this dirty work in there for those big companies because they will get a, a lawsuit for them because they know that uh, regular people, consumers, will not know about it and they will not sue. So they only try to do this one for consumer-grade hard drives, not for the business class or premium hard drives. And I'm going to show you the reason and how you can fix it. So pretty much, first what you want to do, you want to make sure that you download the program and double check, make sure you have a file transfer error as I put it right on the screen right now somewhere. If you get a file communication error or your hard drive just disconnect and connect back again, and this video is for you. So I'm gonna go over how you can open it and fix it. First, I'm gonna go over the tool. Tool number one is a good screwdriver set. I would recommend you the iFixit screwdriver set as they have one of the best bits out there. Every hard drive uses a little bit different uh, screws. For the laptop, we're gonna open two. Uh, for the um, PC hard drives, we're gonna do the same thing. You need a, a little bit of baking soda. Alcohol, 99% or 95% at least. Isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. You need a little bit of flux. Any soldering flux, a little bit. You don't need to get a whole bunch of it, but just a little bit. And a little bit of the solder. I didn't want to bring my whole solder thing here. So a little bit of solder. And uh, you need a solder station. I'll leave this small solder station. I'm going to turn it on. And I'll leave it here. So with all this on hand, and again, it's a good thing to have a workshop towel. Workshop towels are really good because as soon as you put alcohol, you try to clean up. It rips apart and it will not damage the capacitors. So what you're gonna do be the case number one. We're gonna open up this uh, 500 gig hard drive and we have one terabyte over here, same brand. Doesn't matter what brand you have, they're all the same depending the, uh, the grade and depending if they have done the dirty job in them. So we're gonna remove the screw. These are a T9, I believe. Let me double check. Yep, it's a T7, I'll go with a T9. Is a T9 screw, so go ahead and remove the screws for the hard drive on the board only, the bottom of the hard drive. So we're going to remove this one. For the reference, I'm going to open a, a little bit of a premium hard drive or a little bit of business class hard drives. So we remove this one. I'm going to put it on this side. Once I lift it up like this, so you can get the orientation. You can see right away. This is the motor and these are the co contact for the motor and these contacts are for the actuator inside the hard drive. The motor contacts are gold plated. They supposedly have to touch these pads over here but these pads are oxidized. Let me get closer. And you can see these pads are being really oxidized so pretty much they're not making a good contact. At the beginning they weren't making a good contact because of the poor metal quality in here. They made a little arc electric arc in between them and they created uh, this dust particle oxidization around them and it makes it that it doesn't connect sometimes it fails connection and the plate will stop rotating and shuts down comes back on if this one is okay next you want to make sure the contact for the and this one right here the actuators 
they touch these contacts right over here and look at it. They're all oxidized. You don't have a good contact points in here between the actuators and the pads on the board. So this is the consumer grade or up to two terabyte consumer grade. Now we're gonna open a, for the reference, a premium grade. And you can see in here, there's no thermal pads or anything like that. Let's go ahead and remove this one for the reference. And see why do this ones last longer than the other ones. There's many other reasons too, but this is one of the reasons they do it in purpose. Is by design, is not by defect. So don't give them the credit that, oh, they made a defect. It's not defect, it's they've been doing this for years. So we're gonna remove this one. And right away we can see a thermal pad, nice thermal pad in here, isolating foam right in here. And we can see the motor pads are right in here. The pads are golden, gold plated pads, uh, shining right there. And on the board, we can see this spring in golden pads in here, these are spring cables. So they do have perfect contact right through there. And for the actuator contact right in here, look at this one. Beautiful. They have soldered pads because the solder does not corrode and does not oxidize. So they have a soldered the pads so to assure constant connection between the pads and board. You can see right away there. Beautiful contact, beautiful bumpy, nice bumpy pads right there uh, for the actuators. So we're gonna keep this as a reference to one side and we're gonna bring back this one. And we're gonna open the other one too. Now in here, what do you want to do first? You want to clean up the pads. So number one, you want to spray a little bit of alcohol right on the pads. And you want to put a little, uh, little bit of this one on top. Oh, I, I, I did I overdo that. But don't worry. I'm just going to drop down. So I'm just going to drop it. I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to rub over. Use your finger hard and look at it. It's already becoming nice and shiny. Let's put a little more alcohol and do a second pass with an alcohol. You can use a toothbrush to remove the excess of the baking soda. Okay, now we remove the dirt, everything on top. So look at this pads, nice and shiny. These are copper pads, pure copper. And we know that copper corrodes really easy if there's another perfect connection. So that's why they, they don't put a gold plated or anything like that. They don't even put gold. Plated, they put a copper pad. Now we're gonna go on the other pads right in here. We're gonna put a little bit of alcohol and baking soda. Put it on top. And we're just gonna use our finger to just rub, rub, rub. It becomes much more cleaner. Okay, now look at it, the difference. Now it's much, much cleaner. The copper is exposed, nice and shiny. You can put another copper cleaner if you want, but if you don't, you just use an alcohol and a baking soda. That's all you need, baking soda and alcohol. So you don't have to go buy a copper cleaner and use acid or anything like that. Once we clean it up, now it's really simple. What you wanna do, you wanna grab a little bit of flux and you wanna put a flux on the pads right there and a little bit of flux right on top of these other pads okay now where did i put my where did my solder go we're gonna grab a little bit of solder right here now we're gonna grab our solder station and we're gonna grab a little bit of solder on the tip of the solder a little bit and we are gonna put a Place it on top a little bit and let the solder just do its work. Just do back and forward like that. When it's nice and clean, you can just clean the excess of the solder from the tip. Just shake it off and come back and just do a tiny nice pass like that. Just drag it backward. Make sure you get that nice bumpy looking solder right on top. Okay, once you got it cleaned up, you can put a little bit of alcohol and you can just clean it up so you don't have any blocks on top.
So look at that. Now that's a nice pads right in here. So this one will not oxidize or anything. It will last you forever pretty much. Perfect contact for always. Now we're gonna do the same thing in here. In here, we're gonna, again, grab a little bit of solder. And we are gonna put it right on top. And we're gonna just move cross around. Make sure you heat up nicely. You just gonna drag it to us from top to bottom like this. Do this side too. You can rotate and do the other side. Grab a little bit more. I'm trying to show you guys. Take your time doing it. You want to do it straight lines. And there we have it. Now we're going to put a little alcohol and swipe right on top. Make sure there's no more flux in there. This is not the best job, but it is much, much better than the factory copper pads. So this one will last you forever again. You take your time doing it. You want to do a stroke, so like a horizontal stroke so like on each pad gently, nicely. So you get that nice bumpy feeling on top. You don't want to get that pointy feeling. Nice and uh, bumpy feeling. So there we go. We have both pads are soldered and these two will never corrode or never oxidize or anything like that. They will always have a perfect contact. So let's put this one back to one side. Now you saw how you can repair this one. Compare the same thing as the other one, the premium one. So pretty much once you did this one, all you need to do is to put it back down. If you can get a little thermal pads for two millimeter or one millimeter thermal pad, depending on the distance, you can put it on the main chip processor so it can cool down by the aluminum uh, body right in here. And that's it. So we can just put the screws and you're ready to go with your hard drive fixed. This is another one. This is a one terabyte. I'm just going to open it up so you guys can see quickly. And then we're going to go over the uh, laptop hard drives. So remove it. Again, no pad, no thermal pads. And look at the oxidization in here. And look at the pin. The pins on this one, it's a little better, but this last pin right in here in the corner, this one right in here, this one is really oxidized. So same thing. Put an alcohol, baking soda, and just rub on top. Use a toothbrush to shake it. Now, you can either do a, if you don't put the solder on top, it's gonna work perfectly fine for another five, six months, probably, depending how much you use it. But if you wanna prevent it so you don't have to open it up again, put a solder again, flux and solder on top of the pads, and you're ready to go. But if you wanna really quick, and you don't want to buy a solder station or anything like that, just clean it up once in a while and you're ready to go. And that's another way, but that's just uh, not my preference, but an option. Now let's go to over the laptop one, hard drives. These are both consumer grade. This is a 500 gig, this is a one terabyte, even a two terabyte Seagate or two terabyte SGCSD. They do come with an oxidization on the pads, but in this case, they are both consumer grade, but for some reason, this HDSD randomly I picked up from the pile that I have. We open up like hundreds of the hard drives every month. And this one, out of its own siblings, the pads on this ones are not copper, they are soldered. So we're going to remove this one right here. Also, if you guys like my video, if it's helping you guys to repair your hard drives and to learn more about it. You can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I will greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. All right, so if you look at this one, I did not put any solder on this one. And this one did came with a solder right on top. The contact for the motor right in here is a gold-plated spring cables and golden 
golden pads right in here. So this is a perfect hard drive, perfect contact. And this came from manufacturer. It is a consumer grade, but now we go to the Seagate consumer grade. Okay, we're gonna remove this one. There's a lot of shield pad. The contact for the motors are gold plated. In here, they do have a gold plated springs right in here, so we have no problem in here. But once we go to the actuator contact, right in here, look at it. That's why you get an error on a hard drive or you get some random crashes because of this contact, poor contact pads right in here. These are a copper. Same thing we're gonna do. Put an alcohol, baking soda, and wipe it up. I'm gonna do over this one. I'm gonna do off the screen a little bit. Look at the difference. If we gotta focus. Now these are perfect pads right in here. Now if you can install it right now, it's gonna work fine with no issue. But if you want to last longer, put a little bit of the flux right on top. Nice fair amount of flux, we can clean it up later. Okay. And we're gonna grab our, uh, I'm gonna wait for a second to heat up. These are nice solid stations, uh, TS100, 12 volt, 24 volt. It's really handy, heats up really quick. I'll leave the link in the video description in case you wanna purchase yours. So, and we're gonna just do the same thing in here. We're just going to pass nicely over. All right, now what we're going to do, we're just going to clean it up. You have a nice bumpy pads right there. And you see this towel right in here? It's, that's what I'm saying, use workshop towel so you won't damage the capacitor, it will just rip apart before the capacitors get damaged. There we go. So, and this is how you can fix and prevent your hard drive from failing again. Again, I hope you guys like this video and it helps you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you guys learned something new today and I'll see you guys in my next video.